Folks, Hip Hop Patriot here from the Here We Go page today. How you doing? <laughs> you better sit down for this one. You best sit down for this one. As usual, we're going to wait a couple seconds for everybody to pop on live. You guys jump on real fast nowadays, so uh, it ain't going to take long. Just get those shares out. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, you guys are fighting the same fight I am. So let's get it out and let's get it out there strong. This is breaking massive news. Massive news. So you got to get it in your steel. Stop the steel groups if you have them. You got to get them in your Trump groups. You got to get them in your your um, your stand up groups. Get it out there now, guys. How you doing? I want to do some live shout outs as what as you guys are sharing. It's a good time to do that sharing. Um, Stacy Garcia, good to see you. George Nutting, good. Hey, that's a good a good friend of mine, man. George Nutting, good to see you, brother. Roger Lacors, how you doing? Joshua Larrabee, good to see you. Um, Bubba Fry, how you doing, man? Eric Schroeder, Megan Marie. Guys, we want to get this to about three or 4,000 people watching. It's the only way that we get massive coverage right away. Robert Sanchez from Dakota, North Dakota. How you doing, man? Roger LaCourse and Shirley Allen. How you doing? Thank you. Ashley La, uh, La Follette. Always good to see you. I'm, I'm so glad that you, uh, that you are on this page and that you, uh, and you share and that you support. And Trisha Williams, a good, uh, long, long, long friend of mine. Um, and Kathy Clemens from Ohio. Okay, guys. <laughs> we got about two and a half thousand. Bump it up. Let's get it up. So just in, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Oh, I hate to uh I hate to break the big news before we get everybody in here, but hey, we got enough in here. The big news is circuit court, uh the circuit courts, the judges have been reassigned as of today. And a lot and I just put that post out, and a lot of people are going, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean for us, you know, for, for Americans and, 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 uh, and this election? Well, what that means is um, all of the circuit courts that everything has to go through in order to get to a full Supreme Court um, hearing or trial has to go through circuit courts first, circuit court of appeals. OK, that's why this is huge. And President Trump has reassigned the circuit court justices as of today, it's on uh, the government website. I will post the link in the comment thread of this video later on. Um, I'll post it a bunch of times so you can't miss it. But it's just been, it's, it's effective immediately of today. And let me read to you guys what it's pertaining to. Circuit courts have been reassigned, effective November 20th, immediately. Ordered pursuant to Title 28, U.S. Code Section 42. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, that, you know, when Rudy and, um, and, and, uh, Sydney or any, and, and Lynn Wood, when they do appeal court, uh, appeals to, uh, lower court decisions, they have to work their way up. And now they have to go through circuit, the circuit courts, uh, circuit court of appeals. Okay. So what President Trump just did is he eliminated an entire step. He eliminated an entire step because you want to know who he put in charge of where? Brett Kavanaugh is in charge of Michigan. Amy Coney Barrett is in charge of Wisconsin. Justice Samuel Alito is in charge of Pennsylvania. And Justice Clarence Thomas, ladies and gentlemen, are, is, is in charge of Georgia. <laughs> I never saw that coming. I never saw that coming. As soon as I got word that that just, that that happened, it, I, I could not, I could not believe my ears. I could not believe my ears. Get this video out. Share the good news, ladies and gentlemen. And why that's good news is it's not because Trump has these Supreme Court justices in his pocket. It's because these Supreme Court justice, um, justices specifically are constitutional textualists. And, if you, and, and, and just to give you an idea of what a constitutional textualist is, uh, Amy Coney Barrett is probably the most constitutional textualist judge there is on, in the Supreme Court. What it means is, guys, that they do not um, interpret the Constitution any other way than the way it was written. Is that not genius of Trump? Trump always finishes ahead of schedule and under budget. And everybody's been worried about, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Are we going to get, are we going to be able to work all these separate cases in all these separate states all up to get one massive Supreme Court hearing? Nope. Not going to need to do that, ladies and gentlemen. Not going to need to do that now. So let me just re, 
uh, state what I just said for those who are jumping on. The biggest news, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest news of the day is that uh, the circuit court justices have been reassigned. Their districts have been reassigned. So you have federal judges all throughout the United States. Well, the circuit court, I mean, the, uh, the Supreme Court justices, they oversee certain areas of the country for all those federal courts. It's like a circuit of federal courts that they oversee. So when you lose in court at a lower level, you work your way up and you go through the, um, you finally get to the, uh, the federal uh, circuit court of appeals. Once you make it through the circuit court of appeals, then you try and go and, and gather all the Supreme Court justices up for one big hearing. You ain't going to have to do that now, ladies and gentlemen, because President Trump just reassigned all of the Supreme Court justices new districts. And as I just said, Michigan is going to be now overseen by Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Wisconsin is now going to be overseen by Amy Coney Barrett. Pennsylvania is now going to be overseen by Justice Samuel Alito. And, and, that is who pre, and that is who Pennsylvania defied his orders anyways when he, when he said all these ballots need to be segregated because we don't know what we're going to do with them. They violated that order from Samuel Alito. And now he's going to be in charge of those circuit courts that violated his order just two weeks ago. And Clarence Thomas will oversee Georgia. Now, ladies and gentlemen, can I get some hearts? Can I get some love or what? Oh, glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I, I did not see this coming. I, I, <laughs> I did not see that coming. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we just saved so much time, effort, and, and headache and stress for all of us. All of us just saved so much time with what we just heard. Because now... We are our deadline of December 14th. Ladies and gentlemen, from now until then, there's a lot of time to continue to gather more evidence. Okay? From now until then, there's a lot of time to gather more evidence. I know, man. Isn't it nuts? I'm reading some of your guys' where is that source? I'll I'll put I'll put a thousand of them in the comment thread as soon as we're done. And I just posted it. I just posted the uh the source before uh, before we did this video, and it's it's from the government website. So if anybody's got that, please post it in here for everybody to see. If not, I'll post it. I'll post it all over the place because you can't get fact checked on that one. <laughs> oh, sweet Caroline, ba ba ba, woo! Trump has never looked so good, so good. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, we got the numbers up. We're almost at 4,000. Okay, let's keep talking. So outside of that, because that wasn't that just happened, ladies and gentlemen. I just, like I just heard that before I was getting ready to come on. I was gonna tell you the state in which all these different certifications are in right now. The election is falling apart. You won't hear this on the mainstream media, of course, but the election is falling apart. Dominion executives. Now we all know the name Dominion, right? Dominion executives um, were supposed to meet with Pennsylvania legislators today, and that meeting was supposed to take place for uh, for questions and answering. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of stuff going on, and and where better to get the information from than the horse's mouth? So Dominion uh, was supposed to meet with Pennsylvania legislators today. Most of you know by now that that didn't happen. They did not meet with Pennsylvania legislators today. Why didn't they meet with Pennsylvania legislators? Because instead of meeting up, ladies and gentlemen, they lawyered up. Think about that. Dominion executives and employees from Dominion did not meet up with the legislation of Pennsylvania today to clear up any wrongdoing. No, 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 no. They lawyered up. And the rest of them have been busy erasing themselves from the internet, erasing themselves from LinkedIn, erasing themselves their li their little their literal brick and mortar um, uh, footprint out there in the world. They're trying. They're leaving those. They're just ass up and gone. They're bouncing. Why? Why is Kamala Harris and Joe Biden asking for a, a ton of more money? Joe Biden just put out a tweet and he said, "Here's the deal." Or I don't know if it was a tweet. I think it was a tweet. Here's the deal. And he said, because Trump won't concede, blah, blah, blah. We need money. They're, they're, they're asking for tons of money. We already knew that. Dominion's lawyering up. 
Nobody, they're calling us, they're calling every, all these um, election officials who won't certify racist. They're doxing their kids. They're trying to, cra they're trying to uh, run and the other ones are trying to change the rules. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to win because you are trapped. Do you understand what the definition of a trap is? You were trapped. You got caught with your hands in the cookie jar. And instead of calling a national state of emergency, or instead of calling martial law, Donald Trump knows that the law is on his side because you got trapped, because you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar, and he's going to do it um, through the court system so that he can have a uh, Supreme Court justice tell the world, this is what happened, we're not going to allow it to happen. So that it takes, I mean, it's not going to completely take the heat off Donald Trump. They're going to say he's got the Supreme Court justices in his pocket and he's a totalitarian and he's a blah, 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 blah. But the way he's doing it is absolutely mind blowing, like how smart this man is. Like who would have thought of redistricting? I mean, uh, to reassigning circuit court judges from the Supreme Court to save a step. I mean, <laughs> just unbelievable. And so, because of the fact that Dominion is doing this, it's actually giving other state legislation, uh, legislative elected officials a little bit of courage. And did you see that Donald Trump was having coffee with those Michigan, uh, um, those Michigan elector, uh, elect, elected officials who were supposed to certify, but then got, but then got, uh, uh, you know, threatened and their and their kids got doxxed to where they go to school now and now president trump was having coffee with them <laughs> everybody's asking where trump is where's trump i haven't seen trump well again you guys you have to you have to understand something here president trump is not a politician so he's not going to be out there kissing babies and putting out fires President Trump has his nose down his eyes forward and 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 he's beelining it He's working, ladies and gentlemen. That's where President Trump is. He's working. He's too busy reassigning Supreme Court judges to different circuits so we can save some weeks here. It's, it's just absolutely incredible what we're actually seeing go down. And, and, and it's nice to get some validation. It's nice to get some, some vindication. You know what I mean? So here's uh, an example of how the election is falling apart. Nobody is um, certifying. None of these states are going to certify. And, and just like Sidney Powell says, go ahead and certify. FAFO, basically. F around and find out. F around and find out. Go ahead and certify. Because after we shoot that down in court, I'm putting you in prison. And I'm putting a, a, a defamation, I mean, not defamation, a, a civil lawsuit on you too. So you'll lose everything. So all this intimidation stuff, when, when Sidney Powell yesterday was saying we will not be intimidated, there's no reason to be intimidated. The law is on our side. The Constitution is on our side. The truth is on our side. And more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, on high, is on our side. <laughs> and how are you going to stop that? How are you going to stop the armor and the army of God? It's impossible. That's why it blows my mind when I see all these people like saying that Donald Trump's going down and all these and all these people losing faith. It's like, don't you know? Don't you know who's on our side? It's impossible. <laughs> mm. So let me give you an idea of how this is falling apart. I want to give a big shout out to County Commissioner Joe. Let me see if I get his name right. Joe Gale. County Commissioner Joe J Joe Gale. He's in Montgomery County, uh, Pennsylvania. He is refusing to certify the election results of 830,000 ballots. Ladies and gentlemen, that's more than four different states combined in this country. Some, the tiny ones. He is refusing, and, ha and, and, and from what I understand, chest out. Like, no, no, F around and find out. He is refusing to certify 830,000 uh, ballots. And again, his name is County Commissioner Joe Joseph Gale from Montgomery County in Pennsylvania. That is massive. You're seeing it happen in Michigan. You're going to start seeing it happen in Arizona. You're going to start seeing it happen in Nevada. You're going to see it start happening in Wisconsin. One by one, like dominoes, you're going to see all of these certifications falling apart.
And when you have all of these certifications falling apart, and you have people like Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, Justice Alito, and Justice Clarence Thomas to oversee all those states to make sure that the Constitution uh, prevails and those ballots are not counted. Ladies and gentlemen, what you have then is a President Donald Trump. You have him by the Electoral, electoral College alone, not even going to the state legislation in Congress. Many paths to victory. He's been saying that. He has been saying that. It's, it's, it's just fascinating. It really is fascinating to see this man's plan at work. I thought Georgia is certifying tonight. Well, we'll see. Because if Georgia does certify tonight, then they're going to be, um, it's, they're going to be sued. And it's going to go right, in, and it's going to go to Clarence Thomas. So go ahead. Have fun, Kemp. Have fun, because Kemp in the end is the only one who can actually sign off on that certification. Have fun, Kemp. We'll see, you can show the world your true colors while you're continuing trying to... Uh, Lynn Wood already gave you your get-out-of-jail-free card, Brian Kemp. I don't know why you're not using it. I mean, maybe he will. We'll find out. We'll find out. But piece by piece, it's falling apart. And you're going to see a President Donald Trump again. You are. And it's funny. that, And you want to know something? Everybody was so upset when Nancy Pelosi became Speaker again because um, uh, everybody thought that she wasn't going to have the votes. McCarthy didn't think she was going to have the votes. Well, let me tell you something. When I saw that, I was ecstatic. I was so happy that if it does go to the state legislators in Congress to choose who's going to be the next president of the United States, then the Republicans have it because there's no way they can be swayed because they have to vote party line. So I would just relish in the fact that Nancy Piglosi, stretch face Armstrong herself, I would relish in the fact that she would have to use that gavel and say what the final, <laughs> the final vote was. Oh, oh, talk about just digging it in deeper, huh? Well, Nancy, that's what you get for buying, you know, your expensive ice cream and getting your and getting your uh, going to the salon without your mask and trying to make the rest of the world do something that you know damn well they don't have to do. So we got, I mean, we got more. Just we just we even got more breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. So I was sent something today, and I actually did some research on it, and it blew my mind. It blew my mind. Now. The Constitution says that no president shall serve longer than two terms. I mean, we know that it happened before, but nowadays you can't serve longer than two terms. But what's fascinating to me is that fraud of any kind will uh, make everything null and void. Fraud of any kind will make everything null and void when it comes to the Supreme Court and their interpretation of how laws are supposed to be adhered to. And if there's a fraudulent uh, act such as this, such a massive fraudulent act such as this, and let's say that Donald Trump has to declare a state of emergency in order to get this election under control, and then let's say that the riots break out heavy, 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 and Donald Trump has to declare martial law, and if the Supreme Court says there is too much fraud that this election was null in void, then Donald Trump, the sitting president, remains the sitting president and was not officially elected into office. Now, this is where I was starting to do some research here. You know how Donald Trump has been kidding on the campaign trail for about a year when he goes out? When he says, who knows, maybe we'll be here for another four years. Maybe we'll be here for another eight years, maybe 12. And you know, he's just joking. Uh, but he says this gets the media all riled up. This gets them all riled up. Remember when he's, you know how he said that like a ton of times and we all just kind of laughed? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if an election is deemed null and void and never even happened because of the massive fraud, then Donald Trump wasn't elected a president. He was a sitting president that stayed until the next election, which means technically because fraud supersedes everything when it comes to the Supreme Court, Donald Trump possibly, and I'm not saying this, he could 100% do this. I mean, this would be up to lawyers to determine in court. But but because of the uh, the state of the um, emergency executive order that he signed in 2018, ladies and gentlemen, he could possibly be president again. 
And we just heard Georgia, Georgia just certified. So you know dang well that President Trump's team is going to be in Georgia. And they're going to be um, litigating that. So don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about how the mainstream media will take its 24-hour spin on this. And be like, oh, look, oh, look. But think about it, ladies and gentlemen. If Donald Trump remains a sitting president and was not elected in because the actual election and the all the, and all the votes were deemed null and void and nothing happened, then he could run in in my in my opinion, in my interpretation of the Supreme Court and uh, of what they you know how they look at law and and the Constitution, he could possibly be president for for twelve years. <laughs> Hey, Bryson, Bryson, Gray, you need to make a part two, a sequel. Donald Trump is your president, <laughs> whether you like it or not. <laughs> Shout out, Bryson Gray. I love to see everybody out there doing that MAGA music, man. What a great thing. What a great thing to see, huh? Mm-mm. Mm-mm, 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 And we're going to talk about one more thing before we go, guys, and that is Tucker Carlson. Now, okay, I'm going to get real with you here for a minute, okay? My view, I'm gonna, I'm gonna even, I'm gonna get real with you here, okay? Tucker Carlson, <clears throat> what he said last night and what he did last night, and how it made everybody mad, and 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 everybody's dropping dropping like flies from Tucker now. Let me just tell you something about Tucker, okay? I went and watched what he said. I I, I watched it twice actually. I watched it twice, and I don't think that Tucker Carlson actually deserved everything that we threw at him. Now, was I mad? You're dang right I was mad. Was I upset? Oh, yeah. I was upset at his... It, it almost sounded like he was petulant and whiny. But you got to understand something, ladies and gentlemen. He is in a, he's in a business. And he's in a business of breaking news. And Tucker feels like he is big enough. I mean, he's got the best cable ratings of all time. Okay, Tucker feels that he's big enough and he's been loyal enough to get vital information to break first, especially since Maria and Lou Dobbs and all those guys are getting it. And Tucker isn't. Okay, Tucker was merely trying to get a story. Now, maybe he was rude to Sydney. Maybe he was pushy to Sydney. Okay, maybe he was. But you got to understand something, guys. We need allies. We need allies. All right. Tucker's trying to do something that Bill O'Reilly does, and it's trying to stay neutral, even though you know where he leans um, personally. I don't, I was mad at Tucker, but I don't think he deserves what he got. And if we do that, guys, if we keep doing that, we're going to alienate our allies more and more. Okay? Sydney and Tucker, probably, they're, Sydney's under massive pressure right now. All right? And we're going to talk about her in a second, too. I forgot all about that. Oh, my God, more breaking news. Ah! So, anyway, I, I think we need our allies. We, need to, we, we can be mad at Tucker. We don't have to agree on everything, okay? I really honestly believe that he's our ally there. He's done a lot for us. He's done a lot for Donald Trump over the last four years. I'm not saying you have to, you know, bow down to the guy or anything like that. But I'm saying maybe give him a little bit of a break. We don't need to build walls between our allies. Because our allies, especially people like him, um, you know, I know, I know his, his numbers are going down, but where do you run to? You know what I mean? Where do you run to? I'm not saying that you, you, you listen to Tucker as much as you used to. I'm just saying that he wasn't, he wasn't as bad as what I seen everybody going, we're just running away from him. That's just my personal opinion. Okay. I'm, I do things that you guys probably don't like. You know, we don't always agree. We don't always agree. And we're never going to always agree. All right, so we I, I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. Now, last breaking news. Sidney Powell confirms today what PolitiFact, I should say PolitiFake, and USA Yesterday and Facebook flagged on my Facebook page and got some of you guys banned. We, we reported a week ago that the servers were um, confiscated in Germany. That's what we reported a week ago here. Okay, when I put it out, they put a filter over it. You guys got banned. Everything got, oh, fake news, fake news. Well, Sidney Powell says today, um, and I knew it yesterday, when they asked her in the pre press conference where she got, I mean, is the, did the server, you know, was it you guys, the bad guys? If you go back and watch that video, when Sidney says, we don't know if the good guys got it or the bad guys got it, if you look back at Jenna Ellis and you look back at um, Rudy when she says that, right when she says that, they smirk. 
and they smirk hard. They're like this. I knew right then and there, that was my body language validation for me personally, that we got those servers. Well, Sidney Powell said today on air on radio, and I believe she even said it somewhere else on a video, but I know she said it on audio, um, that the servers, that they do have the servers, that the servers were picked up by the U.S. military. And here's another thing. Here's another thing I hear. And I don't know if this is true, Facebook. I don't know if this is true, but this is what I hear. What I hear is the Dominion was never in charge. I mean, Dominion never was in, 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 in um, custody of the servers. From what I hear, the CIA was in custody of the servers, which is exactly why it makes sense when we reported this a week ago and I said to you that the CIA was left out of it. Wouldn't it make 100% sense right at the time that he's firing people in the DOD and in the Pentagon that the CIA and is left out of this ops mission and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden we're hearing rumors that the CIA might have been the ones that the Dominion servers were confiscated from and not Dominion themselves? And she confirmed that today. Okay, somebody said yes on the Glenn Beck radio show as well. So there you go. She said it on Glenn Beck and she said it on, on conservative audio on radio today too. So if that's true, if the CIA was left out of this because the CIA was the exact people that we were confiscating the servers from, and she confirms this morning that the U.S. military is in control of the servers, and who is the commander-in-chief of the U.S. military? I'll give you guys a second to, uh, to respond to that while I take a drink of coffee from this beautiful Donald Trump mug. Can anybody tell me who is the chief, the executive boss over the U.S. Army and the military? Anybody? Commander in chief? I'll get, well, I'm sure you guys have all put it in there, but it just hasn't caught up by now. But Donald J. Trump is the commander in chief of the military, ladies and gentlemen. That's his boss. I mean, that's his, he's their boss and that's his, that's his, if he has anything, he has that. If he has any power as the president, he has that. Commander in chief. It's like being CEO of a company. Commander and chief of the U.S. military. And if the U.S. Army, confiscated the Dominion servers and they're in possession of them, then that means Donald J. Trump is in possession of them. And if Donald J. P Trump is in possession of them, then that means Sidney Powell is in possession of them. And all these people like Tucker, they want to just show us the evidence. You'll see the evidence when it's time for you to see the evidence. We're on a very small window of time here, ladies and gentlemen, to get all this done. We have the best people in the world doing this. Okay. We're going to get there. Donald Trump will be your president in 2021, January 20th, 2021. That, let's, let's do it like, what, how does Nancy Pelosi say it? He could take that to the bank. You could take that to the bank. But we don't have to rely on all the information. We just have to rely on God. It's what I do every day. It's what you should do every day. Rely on God. Rely on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All glory goes to him. He's got this. This is all worked out. This was a trap. And because it's a trap, if you ask me my personal opinion, then it is a, a sure thing. A sure thing. Especially what I just saw today with them reassigning the circuit courts. Hey, rebirth of America. It's been a long time coming and we all learned something that we won't ever give it up. I hope you guys like the new song, Rebirth of America. It's out now. Thank you guys very much. I don't know how often I can come to you daily. There's so much going on right now. I have a lot of stuff going on. So if I don't come on in the mornings, I'll try to come on on nights or vice versa. Um, if anything is a, a major breaking update that I get of any, way, of any source from anybody, uh, pertaining to this that's true and big, I'll give it to you. I don't care what time of day it is. Trust me, I'm up late. I'm up real late, especially now. Mm. So I hope you all sleep better. I hope you share the video. I can't wait to see you again. Maga like a mofo. Keep the faith. Hold the line because it's a new day. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen.